In this video, we're gonna add one last entity into our profile to kind of clean it up and make it almost perfect. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna get back into our profile creation toolbar. We're gonna select the profile that we've been working with. We're gonna go to geometry editor and inside of our profile layout tools, we're gonna add in a couple more curves. So in order to add curves, there's multiple options in adding curves. There is the curve drop down here. So you have your fixed vertical curves, your floating vertical curves and your free vertical curves. And then of course, like we saw at the beginning of these videos when we were creating profiles, you can draw tangent to tangent with curves. Since we have a profile that connects to the beginning point of our alignment and the end point of our alignment, we're not going to draw any tangents with curves. So all of our curves in this video are going to be handled inserting through the insertion of a curve. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to do free vertical curves parabolic. So I'm going to click here. Uh, what Civil 3D is going to ask me is it's going to say select my first entity. I know that I want to add two vertical curves. One I want to add here because this grade break in here going from a negative 2 to a positive 1.34, that's a pretty severe grade break for driving along a road and I'd rather have it be more smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and select the first entity and the second entity and now Civil 3D is going to ask me for a K value. I can also choose radius, length, or pass through. I'm more comfortable with length so I'm going to go ahead and hit L for length and then hit enter. Now Civil 3D is asking me for the length on that curve. I'm not sure if it's going to fit or not but I'm going to try it. I'm going to go with a hundred foot vertical curve and I'm going to hit enter. Uh, and so that solution worked and so I'm going to hit enter again to accept that change. And you can see how close that was to not working. If I had said 125, I don't think that would have worked out. It wouldn't have, it would have crossed over into this next vertical curve. And basically what Civil 3D would have returned was that the solution was not found. And that's okay. You just can just try it again uh, and find a curve that works for you. You can even set it as a very small curve, like a 10 foot vertical curve, and then go into your grid view and modify it from there expanding it up as you need to see to get to your, you know, do an iterative approach to finding out what the vertical curve length that works for your drawing is. I'm going to go ahead and add another one in here. I'm going to, again, do a free vertical curve parabola. I'm going to select this entity coming in and this entity going out. And because this is going out of the road here and into my site, I don't want to expand too far out and I don't want to disrupt what's going on with this ditch here and the existing road. So I'll probably go with something that's a little smaller. I might go with 100. I think I'll probably try 100 to start with, and then we can see if it's too large. So I'm going to click both. Civil 3D is going to ask me for a curve length. I'm going to put it in 100. And if I hit enter twice, it gives me this option. It's close to the edge of the road, but it's not crossing over this ditch, which demarcates the, the end of the roadway and, and kind of the existing improvements that I don't want to interfere with. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it as 100 because it probably would be nicer to drive in on than a 50 foot vertical curve. I could maybe get away with 150, but I might be cutting it too close to this drainage ditch right here. So we've now added in all of our vertical curves. And so we'll discuss one more editing option and then we'll get into displaying this profile and our alignment using some labels and styles.